What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are covering everything summer worm fishing. It is hot out, it's the dog days of summer. I got some tips, some tricks, some baits for you guys to improve your summer bass fishing. Summer worm fishing can be some of the most lights out fishing you've ever experienced. We've shot videos in the past where we actually fished with a subscriber and caught well over 150 fish in a single day just on a shaky head. Summertime, the air temps are up, the water temps are up, and the fish are active. It's not the best time to catch the biggest fish of your life, but it quite possibly could be the best time to catch the most fish of your life. So today I'm gonna to cover four techniques for you, two that are fairly basic, and I'm gonna dive deep into two other techniques. I got some baits and some gear that you guys should check out. So first and foremost, summer worm fishing. I'm typically not fish fishing shallow grass. I'm typically targeting rock and deeper rock. Because quite honestly, if I'm fishing grass, I'm gonna be throwing a frog, I'm gonna be flipping or punching a chatterbait, something like that. But deep rock, you can catch a lot of fish and good ones too. So the first technique that I wanna to talk to you guys about is a Texas rig. Now hopefully you guys got a chance to check out a video I did a few weeks ago about magnum worms, summer magnum worm fishing, uh, night fishing, big worms, that sort of stuff. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out that video, a lot of the same stuff applies to today's video, but I'll put a link to it up here. But uh, typically in the summertime, a lot of people throw a Texas rig. And like I said before, in, the, in that big magnum worm video, I covered kind of the two basic types of worm, well three, uh, a ribbon tail worm, a straight tail worm, and a wacky rigged worm. But uh, typically, if I am throwing a Texas rig, I'm gonna be throwing a ribbon tail worm, a worm that has a big tail on it that has a lot of action because as I'm dragging that bait, I want that tail back there kicking and bringing some movement to these fish. They're, they're active, right? So, Texas rig, if I am throwing a dragging technique, a Carolina rig or a Texas rig, I typically go with a worm that has a lot of tail movement, but nine times out of 10 in the summer, I'm throwing a shaky head. Now the reason for that, see a shaky head right here? This is that T-Mac, that net bait T-Mac rigged on a dirty jigs uh, shaky head. Hopefully you guys got a chance to check out a video we did a probably, I don't know, a few months ago now. It's an underwater shaky head video and uh, we had some surprises in there, some worms that really stood out, really stood up and uh, that T-Mac was one of them. So if you guys haven't checked out that underwater footage of some of those top shaky head worms, I'll link it also up in the corner and down below in the video's description. But getting back to a shaky head worm, as I mentioned before, the water temps are up and the, the fish are very aggressive. So I like throwing a shaky head because the worm itself is connected to the head. You know, a Texas rig, you have that, that weight possibly sliding up and down, but a shaky head, that weight is connected directly to the head. So any movement that head does, that worm is, is instantly following. It's more reactive. So when I'm fishing a shaky head in the summertime, I'm shaking it, I'm shaking that rod tip. I want that tail down there dancing. I'm, I'm popping it, I'm working it very erratic, very aggressive to get those fish to commit. You know, a Texas rig, you can do that if you peg it, but the shaky head for me tends to work better. You can vary all different sizes of heads. You know, sometimes I'll throw a shaky head up to you know, three quarters of an ounce or even an ounce on, on say a, a magnum worm, a giant worm, but typically I'm throwing three sixteenths, quarter, three eighths, half ounce, something like that. But again, I'm, I'm popping that worm. I want that thing coming up, dropping, hitting that rock, ticking it, making a lot of commotion, a lot of noise. Now, with that said, although 
the fish are super aggressive, a lot of times you won't actually feel the bite. It's just gonna feel funny. It's gonna feel like you have a, a wet rag hanging on the tip of your rod. It's just gonna slowly load. We've talked about it before in previous videos, that deflection of a rod tip. Sometimes you will actually see that bite or see that fish before you will feel anything in your rod. So when I'm hopping that worm up, nine times out of 10, they're gonna eat it on the fall. So hop, hop, it's fallen, they eat it. I go to hop, hop again, and it's, it's, it's different. It, if I can give you guys one important tip for summer worm fishing, set the hook if your bait feels different, weird, whatever you wanna call it, set the hook, because hook sets are free, and most likely that's a fish either has your bait by the back or it actually has it in its mouth and it's just sitting there. So, hop, hop, drop, go to hop again. It's heavy, reel down and jack them. Hop, hop, drag, shake, 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 hop, hop, hop. You're working this thing very quickly, very erratically. You're covering a lot of water to find those active fish. I preach this all the time to you guys. You guys know that Matt and I, uh, if you guys have been following us for a long time, we always stress for bottom contact baits and finesse techniques, purchase the nicest, most sensitive rod that you can afford. Do not break the bank. Do not go into debt over fishing tackle. But if you can afford it, if you worked hard and earned that money and you can afford it, purchase the, the nicest rod that you can afford. You know, that might be a $60 rod. That might be a $100 rod. That might be a $500 rod. You know, our subscriber base is a full gamut. We have everybody that follows us. So depending on you and your budget, go with the most sensitive rod you can afford, especially summertime worm fishing, because like I said, those bites are different. They're weird. Uh, it's just heavy sometimes. Sometimes they're gonna rip the rod out of your hand. Sometimes they're gonna, they're gonna tick it so hard that you feel it all the way through the butt of the handle. But sometimes it's just different. That is where a sensitive rod comes into play. Now, guys on a budget, one of the easiest things, uh, two tips for you. One of the easiest things you guys can do to increase your sensitivity, switch over to braid. You, you instantly increase your sensitivity, you instantly increase your feel of bottom contact baits. So if you are on a low budget, spend a little bit extra money and get some braided line and we'll tie a floro or a mono leader and you will instantly increase the sensitivity of the rod you're fishing. The second tip, if you are <clears throat> lacking sensitivity or uh, you feel like you're not feeling the bite quick enough, look into getting a little bit longer rod. Those of you guys that are throwing like a six foot, 6'6", six, 6'10", six, six, rod. Uh, if you get a little bit longer rod, like a 7'2", to 7'6", something with a little bit of a softer tip, you're gonna see that deflection a lot quicker than you would with a shorter rod with a, with a, with a, a, a faster, more stout tip. Hopefully that makes sense. So get some braid, get a little bit longer rod, and that will help your guys' sensitivity and feeling detecting bites sooner than later. So we talked about shaky head. I'm gonna go over some baits here in a second, but uh, I'm gonna cover some, some other techniques real quick. You know, it's pretty hard to talk uh, about summer worm fishing without mentioning uh, a stick bait, you know, a wacky rig stick bait or a drop shot. Got all sorts of tangles going on here. But quite honestly, I don't throw a a weightless stick bait very often in the summer because one, you're fishing shallow and two, you're fishing most likely around grass or docks or structure, that, that type of structure. I'm gonna be throwing something different. So you can, you can start throwing a, a six or seven inch Senko, a wacky rig Senko or whatever your favorite stick bait is. You can do it. I just would, me personally, I just fish differently if I can, if I'm in a tournament situation where I have to put fish in the boat, by all means, I'll do whatever it takes. But if I'm just out fun fishing, if I have a choice to pick up a weightless Senko or a frog, 
it's gonna be a frog for me every time. I can throw a weightless Senko 12 months out of the year. It's pretty hard to throw a frog you know, in the winter time. So those of you guys wonder why I haven't covered that, that is why. But a drop shot, it is almost impossible to talk about summer worm fishing without talking about a drop shot. I have this one rigged up on that, uh, that Reaction Innovations flirt worm. Again, another worm that really stood out in that underwater footage with that tapered tail, that little spade tail on there, just a lot of action. Again, summertime, warm water, fish are active, so I'm looking for worms that have a lot of action. This tapered tail with that spade tail down there, I'll call it a spade, I don't know, what, whatever you wanna call it, but uh, a lot of action in the water. For me, I'm throwing a drop shot if I come across a school of fish. If I'm looking at the, the Solux up there and I see a school of fish down below directly underneath the trolling motor, that is when I, I switch over to the drop shot. I put the shaky head away, sw switch over the drop shot because I can drop straight down on them. Shake, 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 shake. Again, real aggressive. Get those fish interested to get bites. So. I typically only throw the drop shot if I am fish, fishing a specific target. If I am fishing a specific rock pile, uh, a rock on a rock pile, and I have to be very accurate or I wanna sit above it and fish vertically, that is when I go with the drop shot instead of a shaky head. Again, we're covering rock, either shallow rock or deep rock, 12 to 30 feet. That's typically where I am fishing these summer worms. The last technique that I want to talk to you guys about that I um, haven't really talked much about is an actual Ned head, but on a bigger worm. Again, that's that six, six and a half, six and three quarter inch flirt worm from Reaction Innovations. And that's that, uh, that tungsten Ned head. Just like every video, I will link all the stuff I'm talking about down below in the video description. But why not? Why not upsize your worms in the summertime? You can throw a traditional Ned worm during the summertime and catch fish, but again, those fish are active, and a lot of times those little fish beat the big lazy fish to the bait. So if you're getting a lot of bites, upsize your worm to try and limit some of those smaller fish getting in the way from you catching the bigger fish. But uh, take some of your favorite drop shot worms, your favorite shaky head worms, and put it on a Ned head. The benefit to this, I'm gonna work it just like I would a shaky head. Ooh, get a drink of water. Just like I would a shaky head, but I have an exposed hook. So when I'm hop, 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 that bait falls, and I go, I reel down to hop it again, and it's heavy, that exposed hook, all I have to do is reel into it and load up and get that, get that good hook penetration so that versus a shaky head, you gotta jack them on the shaky head because you gotta bury that hook. The hook is not exposed, whereas the uh, darter head or the Ned head has an exposed hook. So you get better hook penetration easier. So let's talk uh, worms. I got a, a handful of worms. Typically, like I said, I am throwing straight tail worms in the summertime for hopping baits. If I'm, throwing a, if I'm throwing a Texas rig or a Carolina rig and I'm dragging, I'm gonna throw a, a ribbon tail or a worm that has good tail uh, kick or movement, wiggle, whatever you wanna call it. But drop shot, shaky head, net head, I'm typically throwing a straight tail worm. What I mean by that, you look at the tail on this worm, yeah, it's a little bit bigger than the rest of the the length right here, but it's still, in my mind, still considered a straight tail worm, as opposed to something like this that has a big ribbon tail on it. Sometimes those ribbon tails, if you do try to put them on a shaky head or a Ned head, or something like that, and you're trying to hop them, that tail, that, that, uh, that tail back there kind of slows the bait down. Uh, if, you, if you will, it just kind of slows the process. And again, I, I, want, to, I want to work that, that thing aggressive and quickly. So, <clears throat> this bait right here, this is that net bait, that T-Mac. 
hands down, that underwater video did I, I did of the shaky head. Uh, this one really caught my eye. It impressed me the most. Matt's been throwing it now for a couple years and has been raving about it. So that's why I even threw it in that underwater video. And this thing, let me tell you, has great action. So that is quickly becoming my absolute favorite shaky head warmer. If you guys haven't checked these out, they are a must. You should go check those out. The trick worm. You know, how do you talk about a summer worm fishing video without mentioning a trick worm? You can go throw a trick worm on any body of water in the country right now and catch a fish. So if you guys haven't checked out a trick worm, check out the trick worm. And real quickly, you'll notice colors on all of these baits, no matter if it's a Texas rig or a drop shot rig or a shaky head rig, I keep my worms very simple in the summertime. It's all based on water clarity. Again, I've covered some of this stuff in a previous Magnum Worm video, but uh, water clarity. If I am fishing dirty, dingy water that doesn't have very good visibility, I'm going with black blue with June bug, something like that that has a real dark color that has good contrast and sticks out in that dirty water. Now on the flip side, if I'm fishing a reservoir or I'm fishing clear water where I have four, six, eight, 10, 12, 20 feet of visibility, that's where I'm going with my natural colors. I'm going with green pumpkins, watermelons, shad, something like that, very basic. Uh, again, match the hatch in your lake, but green pumpkin black flake, watermelon red flake, those types of colors are great in clear water. Getting back to the worms. I've already talked to you guys about the flirt. Again, check that out. That thing has a lot of action and is a great worm. A new one to me over the last couple years, this is the Magnum Swamp Crawler. It's got kind of a, a pointy tail, if you will, but rigged on a shaky head this is another bait that is lights out. So not really brand specific, but I'm giving you guys a handful of baits that you guys should definitely check out in your favorite colors. That right there, the Zoom, the Magnum Swamp Crawler. The Robo Worm. Great action on a shaky head, great action on a drop shot, great colors. It, it uh, stands up really well on a shaky head. Another one of my absolute favorites talked about the T-Mac. If you guys are gonna throw a Texas rig, if you're gonna throw a drag bait, check out this bait right here. This is the Big Dead Ringer. This is a zoom bait with a big ribbon tail on it, and it is a must if you guys are throwing Texas rigs. Great colors, fairly inexpensive, a tip on worm fishing. If you can, I love throwing a shaky head with a screw lock head on it. Again, this is the Dirty Jigs. I'll link everything down below. But see that little keeper right there? This bait screws right on. And if I go through a school of micros or you know some small bass and they can't get this whole thing in their mouth and they just start grabbing the tail and I'm swinging and setting the hook, that keeper right there keeps that worm on the bait and I don't go through nearly as many baits as I would if I wasn't using a screw lock keeper. The last worm that I wanna talk about is the uh, Strike King, the Fat Baby Finesse. This is a smaller, shorter worm. Shorter worm, but you can see it's, it's fat. It's got a real thick tail on it, real good action. This is another great bait for a shaky head or a drop shot. So there it is guys, summer worm fishing. Again, just a little recap. If you can get out early, get out and withstand the heat, you can possibly catch the most fish of your life. You know, summertime fishing, the air temps are up, the water temps are up, those fish are aggressive, they are wanting to eat. It's a great time to get kids out, great time to get family members out, people new, or beginner fishermen because you can catch a lot of fish. If you use these techniques that I covered, the, the shaky head first and foremost, that is my favorite. The drop shot, that's my number two. The net head with a bigger worm, number three. And the Texas rig, between those four techniques, those four techniques, you are bound to catch fish. If you use those baits 
in the colors that we recommend, you guys will go out and have a blast. If you guys learned anything from this video or you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Share it with your, with your friends. If you guys haven't already, please hit that uh, subscribe button and turn on notifications. We're doing three videos a week for you, teaching you guys how to catch more and bigger bass. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.